Okay guys, let's talk about some superheat and subcooling. Where we're going to check it, what lines we're going to talk, what lines we're going to hook it up to. Obviously, we'll go over that in class and everything, but this is going to be a quick video just to kind of refresh on what we're looking at, what temperatures we're looking at, what pressures we want to see, okay? So I'm hooked up to this little this little heat pump here in the lab. It's actually just an air handler. There's not even any heat strips in there. But we got our coil right there, okay? So remember our high side, this is going to be our discharge side of the compressor. This is going to be our low side. This is going to be our suction side of the compressor, evaporator, condenser, okay? Red hose to small line. The small line is usually, the smaller diameter line is going to be your liquid line. We're going to have pressurized subcooled liquid in this line heading to the evaporator. Blue gauge, blue hose. The bigger diameter line is gonna be your vapor line. And it's, it's carrying vapor, superheated vapor, from the evaporator to the compressor and then into the condenser, okay? Subcooling, just to double check, just to refresh, Subcooling is the condensing temperature that we're condensing back into a liquid inside this condenser. And the different and minus or the difference between our liquid line temperature leaving the condenser. I want to see this temperature lower than what we condensed it at. I want to see that this condenser, we got enough airflow over that refrigerant to not only eject the heat that we picked up in the house, condense it back to a liquid, but then cool it down as subcooling. On the other side, I want to see that this evaporator is converting all of that liquid that we're putting into here based on the heat we're putting over it with the blower motor and the room air temperature that we're boiling it to vapor and then all the temperature that we're all the heat energy that we're picking up after we boil from a liquid is going to be heat that we're going to pick up the temperature on this vapor line so our superheat is going to be our boiling temperature And our vapor line temperature, the difference between the two will be our superheat. I want to see this line temperature higher than this boiling point temperature. I want this evaporator to pick up heat. I don't want it to pick up a lot of heat or too much heat, but we need to be picking up some. If we're not pulling heat, energy out of the, our room air or structure air, then we're not going to have cold air coming out of our vents and our customer is going to be pretty upset. <laughs> so let me get this thing fired up and we'll look at the pressures and the temperatures. Okay guys, I fired these out and they've been running. I let it run for a good almost 20 minutes just to make sure everything is good and balanced out so we got nice even steady numbers to look at, okay? Now remember, this is a training situation here. This condenser is usually going to be, it's, it's going to be outside, okay? Um, so we're going to see when we look at our head pressures, our head pressure, and when I say head pressure, I'm referring to the high side pressure. Head pressure, suction pressure, or low side pressure. But our head pressure is a lot lower than we would normally typically like to see it. And the reason for that is because we have a low ambient temperature in this room. Okay, we're not sitting outside. I have my little probe here getting me humidity. But the bottom number, we're only running, we're only 70 degrees inside this room. So basically we're simulating a nice 70 degree day outside. Nice and cool. Not really a cooling day. So we're running kind of a lower head pressure. Which in turn will give us, because we are using a fixed or for a metering device it's going to give us a slightly lower suction pressure inside the evaporator as well 
okay? So what we're looking at here, my liquid line condensing head pressure, whatever you want to call it, our high side pressure, running right about just over 250, 255 pounds with R410A. So that's giving us a condensing temperature of about 84. Remember, we're looking at the pink stripe, pink, pink for R410. So at about 255, 256 pounds of pressure, we are condensing that superheated compressed vapor, we're condensing it back into a liquid at about 84 degrees. Now remember, red gauge high side condensing pressure correlates with our liquid line. This is where we're going to get our subcooling. So I have my temperature probe here on the liquid line. And it's going to be the number, the bottom number, the T2 number. And I'm reading 78 degrees on that line. Over here, I was reading 84. We're condensing that vapor back into a liquid at 84 degrees. So my subcooling is the difference between this 84 degrees and this 78 degrees, which is my temperature on my liquid line. I have six degrees of subcooling. And what that's telling me is that this superheated compressed vapor coming from the evaporator is coming into the condenser, hitting the compressor first, getting compressed. Now it's a superheated compressed vapor and then working its way through this, or this condenser coil, condensing back into a liquid and then cooling down six degrees as a liquid and then heading back towards the evaporator to do it all over again. Subcooling at 84 as my condensing temperature. We're cooling that refrigerant down in this condenser. I have 78 degrees on my liquid line. So I have cooled that liquid. I have subcooled that liquid six degrees in that condenser and sending it back to the evaporator. Let's look at our superheat side. Remember our residential, our residential boiling point that we want to see right in that 40 degree ballpark. That's the money spot right in there. Is it always going to be perfect? It depends on what's happening in the house, outside, what kind of metering device you have. There's a lot of factors, but that's 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 the sweet spot. We want to get it right into that area. So right now, remember, because we are in a training environment, I only have a 70 degree, about 71. I only have a 71 degree ambient temperature. So the pressure on my condenser, my head pressure is lower, meaning my evaporator pressure in turn is going to be slightly lower as well. So we have just a slight lower. We have a clean filter going on. All our vents are open. So we're going to check the superheat. So we're boiling. Now we're on the low side. This is the evaporator pressure. We're boiling that liquid refrigerant that we just dropped the pressure on. We took that subcooled liquid, sent it through this metering device, and dropped the pressure. We dropped the temperature. We dropped the saturation point. So now we're boiling that refrigerant when we blow our room temperature air over that coil. And it's turning from a liquid to a vapor at about 37, 37 degrees. 36, 37. Let's just call it 37. Looks like it's right in between the two numbers there. Remember, we're, we got an R410 system, so we're looking at the pink stripe. So we're running about 110. 112 pounds of pressure. 
So R410 at 110, 112 pounds of pressure is going to boil at about 37 degrees. So we're boiling at about 37 degrees right now. My vapor temperature on this vapor line is my top number on my meter. 59.7, let's round it up to 60. 37, we're boiling at 37. And I have 60 degrees on my line pressure, or my line temperature, excuse me. So I have 23 degrees of superheat. I boiled that liquid at 37 degrees in the evaporator. And then I picked up 27 degrees of heat. I'm sorry, 23 degrees of heat. After I boiled from after I boiled into a vapor, I picked up 23 degrees of heat. And I'm getting that temperature off of this line. I have 23 degrees of superheat. Six degrees of subcooling, 23 degrees of superheat. 